So we got one, one which is gin and one which is tonic. <laughs> there we go. Which one's got the gin in? Oh, the big one, of course. <laughs> Every part of this boat, Trevor, has got a story. So what's the oh, one yes. with the cooker? Well, the, that's the original cooker. And, okay. Um, you know, it's sort of uh, really hard, hard enameled. It's got a grill. Uh, it's got two, two burners. And, uh, of course, it's gimbaled. So it's very heavy material. Um, so I was looking around thinking, well, you know, am I going to spend a lot of time restoring the cooker or go for one of these big stainless steel things with, a, with an oven? And I thought, well, it would really look out of context, a big block of stainless steel. So eventually it was a case of sort of putting a lot of elbow grease in and um, just working on it, polishing up the brass, pulling it to pieces, getting the burners uh, de-rusted and uh, uh, coated with a particular flame retardant paint. And uh, hey presto, there she is in her, in her prime. Obviously heat, we've got wood, um, and we've got fats and so on and so forth. So in order to overcome that problem, I had a bit of stainless steel made and this deflects all the heat and all the fumes and so on, literally out uh, of the hatch. Original, original, because judging from the daughter of the of the owner after Arthur Ransom, apparently his tiller broke. So he, he had one made up, and this one must have been made by somebody else. But. Um, lovely piece of ash so I had the rope work done by um, a chap that I met up at uh, Earl's Court who uh, really looked like the typical old salt and uh, he did a lovely job for me and, and is uh, this going back on sorry is this going back on the boat oh yes this is part of the boat when she goes sailing this goes on that's only there just to stop the the rudder or if I'm just doing a little bit of cruising but if I'm doing sort of real sailing uh, and I want to impress people hey presto that goes on so Trevor I found the wooden spoon tell me about it well the wooden spoon was a big hunk of uh, ebony because um, I was doing some industrial work in the forests of Malawi and took this out and in one of the markets in Blantyre, there were some local carvers. So I said, okay, this is what I want. This is the size. And um, put the, the, what they have there, they call them a family tree. So they do the spoon and, they, and in the handle of the spoon, they put these climbing people on, which apparently gives good luck. So, hey presto, you know, the story of wooden spoon. What is it that's so special about wooden spoon? Well, a wooden spoon is a is a is a family is a family boat. It's not racing. It's very much cruising. It's lots of space. Very well built. And I suppose it goes back a long way as far as we are concerned as a family. It goes back to 1988 or 1987 when she was purchased. Um, and then after that, it was a case that everything was sound, good timbers. The timbers were. I suppose taken from the forests when there were good natural trees rather than plantation grown, so it's very close grained. So when looking at the teak and the mahogany and the aroco that's been used, it's good quality. So and also there's been no, um, you know, sort of savings when they built it. King King's Yard that did it, and also um, the other Porter and Haylard. This is number 24 of the of the fleet, 
So they obviously have got the experience, they've got the, the materials and the, and the workmen. Um, and also, I think the fact that um, a lot of me and the, you know, the family has actually put ourselves into this. Uh, we've got everything the way we like it. The cross crockery, the paintings, the things for the children and so on. So, you know, it's rather, rather homely. And also, when she's in heavy seas, say four, six, four, seven, she's been on, and she just plows through the seas, very comfortable. But um, yeah, that's what makes her special. Well, Wooden Spoon was built in 1964, and uh, my father and I were very keen on Laurent Giles designed yachts, and um, we just happened to see in one of the yachting magazines. The Peter Duck, the original Peter Duck, which was built in 1947 for uh, Arthur Ransom, that was up for sale and up at Woodbridge. So we got in the car, went up there with my mother, and um, Peter Duck was sort of tied alongside. So we went on board, and again, it was a case of stooping. There was only two berths, um, and we thought, hmm. It's going to be a bit, uh, bit tight. And right next door on the next berth was Wooden Spoon, and the masts were out, and she'd been used as a motorboat by the previous owner. So it was up for sale, and virtually the same price as Peter Duck. So we looked on board, and my father said, "Yeah, with a bit of loving care and time and a lot of money, we could do some of this." Well, the trouble is, he didn't say a lot of your loving care and a lot of your time and a lot of <laughs> your money. <laughs> so I was, I was lumbered. Uh, my mother loved it. Um, so we thought, okay, fine, we'll, we'll, we'll buy her. And that was in the you know, latter part of 1987. And then um, to find the masts, we had to wander all around the sheds and we found them, you know, sort of <laughs> banks of nettles. All the sails were stuffed in the back of one of the uh, the sheds. Anyway, this was all loaded onto a truck, brought down to Deacon's, um, further up the river here, and launched and then brought right across to, to Moody's. But it was interesting because the interim period between Deacon's and Moody's, they had the hurricane. And of course the hurricane went right over the hills at Swanwick and everything was fine, whereas here on this side of the river, you know, yachts were being pooped and broke their moorings and so on. So we sailed her for about a year and, um, you know, my, my mother was sort of, you know, taken with her completely and until the parents then decided to go to a naughty cat. And of course, you know, that much better after cabin, you know, completely different kettle of fish. So I said to my father, OK, fine, I'll buy your share, because we you know, both had halves. So I bought his share and then thought, well, you know, she's definitely worth working on. And uh, I had the time and wasn't married at the time, so that was fine. So put her in the shed down at Deacon's and then started the long process of in and out of water, etc. That started to build her up and strip her down, then build her up. And uh, hence, you know, 28 years, whatever. <laughs> it's only now finished. Big compass gets in the way. <laughs> but uh, if there's only one or two people in the cockpit, there's no problem. If there's more, then it becomes a bit of a pain. Um, for that reason, I put another little cop compass underneath and take this off. So a little uh, Garmin. And, but, you know, it's, uh, she's good beautifully suspended. We paid uh, 8750 for for Wooden Spoon. Now she's valued, I mean on a rebuild, if we tried to uh, build her again, uh, the cost is between 120 and 140,000. You know that's a real figure come up you know by our surveyor and so on. Survey costs, uh, the survey was undertaken and in her present state uh, about sixty-five thousand pounds, though you wouldn't get that on the market. You see, because the trouble is that the market, as you well know, is, is 
determined by the value of the other beta ducks and beta ducks I suppose are going for 12,000 but yeah my word that's a slap of <laughs> Hamble slap. I have to handle slap, exactly. You know, luckily, they've got today when there's very little. But um, now, when, when it, if you look at the market value, say if we take the market value of, say, um, 35,000, my estimation, and I think it applies to most wooden yachts, not taking into consideration the, the labor involved, you're looking at five to six times expenditure sales covers bits and pieces and your life jackets you know all this sort of stuff so I've got several box files several my word I got a huge big plastic things which are you know, I was going through yesterday filled with documents and filled with invoices and receipts and so on and so forth I don't even have the time to total up but my estimation is right about that you know, if I, in hindsight, if I'd known, but those those are the days when you didn't have, you know, sort of uh, flotillas, and you didn't have, you know, sort of these lovely places in Greece and uh, Turkey, etc. I would have gone for a piece of plastic and hired it for two or three weeks <laughs> and enjoyed, rather than, I suppose, rather like every wooden boat owner being a slave to the, the yacht and the tin of varnish. But then again, when the wooden boat owners get together, they said they wouldn't like to do anything else. 